clean that up. We're the ones that got to clean that up. Damn it, Michael! We have to have this thing serviced. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button for me, and let's get started. Now, I know what you guys are wondering. What the hell is this? What happened to the Ford Ranger I was working on? What happened to the camper project I was doing? Basically, I hit a speed bump near AutoZone, and for some reason, the uh, shock mount in the rear snapped, which is common for these vehicles, by the way. Um, it snapped, and um, I, I, I kind of got fed up of it because I just changed the head, and then another repair came about. But um, that being said, I brought the car back here, I jacked it up, I removed the rusted uh, mount, and I basically discovered a giant hole in the frame with the mount bolted onto. Basically, there was a big hole the size of my fist. Um, I'm guessing either salt or water got in, in between the mount and the frame and just rotted it away. But uh, basically, now I have a giant hole on the frame, which once again, that's not safe. So I made the decision just to sell it, have someone else worry about it. And um, I honestly just didn't want to work on it anymore. I, I kind of got fed up about it. But that being said, I went ahead and I picked up this beauty. All right, let me show you what I got. So this is a 2000 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited with the 4.7 um, engine and the Quadra Drive configuration transfer case. Basically, the car is perfect. It runs and drives fine. It stops fine. There's a few repairs I'm, I'm gonna have to address, but honestly, this car is really reliable and, it's, and you can get these cars uh, from Facebook and Craigslist for really cheap price. Um, the only issue is they're always high mileage. You're gonna see these vehicles with like 200,000 miles, 300,000 miles, which kind of shows how reliable these vehicles are. This one only has 150, so I still have a good amount of uh, mileage left on this before something seriously breaks. Um, so I'm just gonna do a walk around so you guys can take a look at it. Now, a few things you guys notice off the bat, there's a lot of body damage. Over here, you have like a dent and you have scratches. Um, as you can look at the paint, you have like weird paint, uh, paint transfers. You have this nasty scratch that goes across. There's of course bubbling and rust that looks like I sealed. Um, paints are chipping. The whole hood looks shiny, but that's because I polished it, but there is a lot of scratches everywhere. Um, over here, there's a nasty scrape mark here and all around. So basically the uh, previous owner took the vehicle um, off-roading and all that is just trees, branches, rocks, scraping along the sides. Um, but honestly, I kind of like it because it kind of helped with my LCD um, since it's already scratched up and banged up. Um, I can care less getting an extra dent or an, or an extra scratch when I go wheeling or when somebody opened their door and they ding me. Um, but yeah. Now, the, now let me show you the inside. All right guys, this is the inside. Look how clean it is. There's no cracks, no marks on the dashboard. Uh, all the leather components looks fine. These seats are the, are the best seats. They're so comfortable. Um, honestly, these seats remind me of the Jaguar seats from the, um, well, the 2001 Jaguar XJ. Um, super comfortable. This one, the passenger one is perfect. As for the uh, driver one, it's perfect, except for that, that tear right there. But the seat, uh, I honestly don't care. And, and I'm not gonna put like duct tape to make it look ugly. I'll figure something out in the future, but it looks perfect. Uh, every, the center console looks perfect. Only issue is right there, there's a crack due to, I guess like heating or something. The sun probably baked it, it stretched, it's cracked. But honestly, the whole car looks beautiful door panel looks fine once again there's a little um crack right there um driver's side of course there's cracks with the armrests which i honestly don't care man maybe in the future i'll fix it maybe i'll make a how to um how to repair video on that but basically everything in this car looks perfect and as i mentioned this is the limited so you get you get everything you get everything electric seats um electric memory seats you get all the uh, window controls, you get everything, including the Infinity Gold uh, a stereo system. Um, you have everything. The headliner looks perfectly fine. Both sides looks nice and clean. Now the, um, I guess the uh, previous owner, 
he basically detailed the whole car because I guess he just wanted to get the most out of this vehicle, like the most. Um, so basically he detailed the whole interior. The outside, the way the outside is all shiny and stuff, that's because of me. The guy didn't bother cleaning the outside, I guess, because there's already scratches and stuff. So he, he was trying to hide the scratches and stuff with the dirt. Um, but yeah, the outside, I, I, I went ahead and I washed it, I clay barred it, and I waxed it. And then I put some ceramic coating on it. Um, not really to like improve the, the scratches and like the quality of the, um, the paint job. It, it was just to seal it off so I don't get any rust forming in the future. Um, cause that's the one thing I don't like is just rust because you can't fix rust. All right. And this is the passenger seat is in perfect condition. Once again, little, little aging here, but that's fine. Uh, the rugs, the carpets, perfect, perfect condition. Um, the back over here is perfect. All right. And this is all my gear, my hiking gear, my survival gear, and it, there's no tears or anything. I have a full size tire, uh, below this. Uh, these struts right here are new. I installed them recently just because um, this thing was being really annoying, not staying up. All right, and this is the uh, engine bay. Now, once again, I didn't detail any of this. The uh, previous owner did. Um, he detailed everything, which is fine, but I don't like it when people detail it just because now I don't know what, what got replaced and what didn't. Like, for example, this alternator can look new because it's nice and shiny. Um, I, I kind of like it when people don't detail their engine bay just so I know how old something is based off how it looks. Like for example, the injectors, the um, coil packs here, they look new, but once again, it could be pretty old. It just, he detailed it and cleaned it. Um, but yeah, so far the engine runs uh, solid. There's no issues with that. Now, let me show you all the uh, repairs I need to do. Since I have the engine open here, let me show you first. The guy mixed um, orange coolant with green coolant, which that's a big no-no, especially for this engine. It, it only takes the orange coolant and he's the H-O-A-T coolant, the orange one. So I'm gonna have to flush that out and change that. Um, basically there is a new filter. So the guy did replace the air filter. Um, second thing is there's some weird wiring happening here. I have a check engine light for all my O2 sensors not responding. Like I think it's a high current or something like that. So basically I'm guessing there's some kind of wiring issues with the O2 sensors. I did notice there was a um, there was a wire harness that melted with the exhaust and that goes to one of the O2 sensors. So basically what I'm thinking a fuse tripped and instead of looking all around and making sure, you know, all the cables and everything's in good condition, he just started messing around with the wires and just I guess he got desperate and didn't really check the, the component that got uh, fried from the exhaust pipe. So uh, I need to uh, figure that out, which is not a big deal. The car is inspected for three years. Uh, the second thing is uh, the brake fluid needs to get flushed out. It's pretty nasty. As for the uh, power, as for the power steering, uh, that fluid is good. As for the oil, I did an oil change just because it was low and I just wanted to do it. Um, so. So that, that's that's basically all the repairs for the engine bay. Let me show you what else we need to repair. Axle. Basically the axle runs perfectly fine in perfect condition, but there's only one thing. Basically the, um, the cold spring mount on both sides, the mounts, they're rusty as hell. I believe on the opposite side, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, basically it's so rusty that the, the, the platform is bent and eventually, if I take it off-roading, the spring is just gonna fall right out because there's no um, platform keeping the spring perfectly squared up. So this axle is coming off. I'm gonna store another one. Apparently, my friend found a guy who is gonna sell one um, with the same gear ratio and the same limited slip differential. So it's gonna be a plug-and-play kind of thing. The other thing that I need to repair is are all the brake lines all the brake lines are ugly they're rusty um i guess you can kind of not see it because of, of all the dirt but i need to replace all the brake lines i did order uh, i did order new brake lines new brake hoses and all that um basically for the uh, i ordered new springs new springs insulators um new brake lines new everything so when it comes to the axle swap 
it should be pretty simple. Now, the good thing is the previous owner did install new lower and upper control arms. These are brand new. I did not paint these. These are brand new, which is a big plus. Saves me at least $200 there. Um, if you take a look over here, there is no rust whatsoever. Now, of course, this was not fully black. I painted all this just because um, there was no rust at all. So I want to keep it like that. So I painted the undercarriage, all of it, all that is painted and sealed. Uh, reverse reformer and epoxy paint. So all that's solid. Um, also, what I'm gonna do in the future, um, hopefully in the future, I'm gonna get a high clearance cross member because this one droops way too low. And if I go off-roading, this is gonna be garbage. Um, so I'm gonna have to replace the cross member. Another thing is, I noticed over here, you see how the um, exhaust is just hanging by the catalytic converters down there? Like there's nothing holding this right here. And if, if you take a look over here, it looks like the guy got some kind of like ground cable going to the transmission. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe the previous owner uh, blew a transmission because if you overheat these transmission, they're garbage. So I'm guessing he did a transmission. I'm probably gonna install a um, transmission cooler uh, just because transmission cooler will, will make the transmission last way longer than the factory setup you have in the front. Another thing that needs to go are these tires. If you take a look at the tires, look how crack dry rotted they are. Especially the front one here. This is pretty dangerous, especially at highway speeds. So I got two new tires. Honestly, they're not Wrangler's tires. They're um, basic street tires. I'm just going to replace it for now. In the future, I'm definitely going to lift this Jeep up at least two and a half inches up and put bigger tires. Same thing with this tire. This tire seems better days. Look at it. It's all ugly. Once again, the wheel well, take a look. No rust, no rot, no nothing. All right, so, so far the plan for this vehicle is I'm gonna jack up the car two and a half inches up. Um, I'm gonna put some 31 inch tires on it. I'm gonna put a tire carrier on the back, on the window. Um, but honestly, I love that. I love seeing Grand Cherokees with that uh, tire carrier. Um, I'm gonna put probably a winch in the front with a iron bumper. Um, and probably a roof rack on top and, and of course some LED lights, some light strips. Um, but yeah, that's basically the goal for this one. It's not going to be a rock crawler. It's going to be a, um, a daily driver, but also a uh, overland vehicle. All right, guys, the first cosmetic repair I'm going to do to this vehicle is change out the fog lights. It's pretty ugly. It looks like it got mud inside the lens. So this one's no good. As for this one, this one's still kind of decent, but I kind of... I kind of like nice and clear ones, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap that one out. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Now to remove the fog lights, there's only, I believe it's two 10 millimeter uh, nuts you have to remove from the back and then this thing should come forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. So I got the passenger fog light out. As I mentioned, it's only two 10 millimeter bolts. You don't even have to lift or remove the tire. You can just uh, snake, snake around it and just take it off with a small um, socket and ratchet. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect the bulb. The new one I have comes with bulbs, so I don't need to save this one. I don't need to be worried that I'm gonna touch it. Now, for some reason, the stud stayed behind. So I need to remove those old ones somehow. Alright guys, so I decided to remove the hardware from the new fog lamp and I'm just going to go ahead and use the old um, the old studs that are in there. Hopefully they can go right in. Um, if not, then I need to drill them out or find a way to remove them. And hopefully, if not, I'll figure it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in and hope for the best. All 
right guys, so I got the passenger fog light in. Basically, I got tired of the wider stripping and the wider guard getting in the way, so I jacked up the car, removed the tire, and I went ahead and I got it in. I basically, as I mentioned, I removed the new hardware studs that was on the fog lamp, and I just reused the older one that was already um, situated on the bumper. So now here it is, it's installed. As I mentioned, two 10 millimeter bolts, comes right off, same thing with the plug, perfectly fine, and it's in. There we go, brand new. So now if we take a look at it from here, as you can see, nice brand new one, ugly ones. I'm still debating if I should replace the headlamps All right, and I got the driver fog light installed. Now keep in mind, if you guys are doing this, uh, don't put too much uh, torque, don't torque them too much, the uh, two nuts, just because it's both the housing of the fog lamp and the um, the bracket for the bumper, they're both plastic, so it doesn't require that much. All right, and this is the finished product. It looks pretty nice, the two fog lights on the bumper. Um, of course, if I want the full effect, I, want, I should change out the two headlamps. But I'll think about it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the tire back on. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. For All right, guys, take a look at it. It looks pretty awesome. It looks way better in person than it is on camera. Uh, but the, I love the fog lamps. I love the little black bezel around it. Um, I, I'm still debating if I should replace the headlamps as well. I tried buffing them to make them a bit more clear but they look ugly, I should just replace them. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next repair I'm doing to the vehicle. And that is replacing the small speakers on the front of the um, dashboard. Now basically this is super simple, but yet dangerous. Basically you need to remove this whole um, plastic cover, the one that goes all the way across. Um, the only issue is this is a 20, what, 21 year old vehicle, so these tend to be brittle sometimes. So I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver. I'm just gonna pry a little bit here, pry a little bit here until it comes off. Hopefully it doesn't snap. All right guys, so I went ahead and removed the cover. It came out one piece and it came off nice and easy. None of the uh, plastic clips snapped. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the speaker. If you take a look at this one, the cover already uh, detached from the speaker. That, that's how bad these speakers are. So I'm gonna take a small socket in a seven millimeter and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that and, the, and remove the one down there. So I'll let you know how it goes. All right guys, so I got the uh, two speakers out. Take a look, this is honestly the original ones from Chrysler Infinity, if I can stop the glare. There we go. Chrysler Infinity, these are the original uh, speakers that came with the car 21 years ago. Take a look at it, pretty crusty. Yeah, this thing's completely shot. Honestly, it, I mean, it still works, it's just extremely staticky. So yeah, both of them right here. All right, and this is the uh, cover. I went ahead and I cleaned it and I put a uh, plastic uh, UV protective spray on it just to keep it nice and clean and keep it from cracking because these always crack and finding one in the junkyard is pretty rare. Um, so yeah, nice and clean. And let me show you the new speakers. 30 bucks on Amazon. These are the ones, direct fit. Um, and it should work. I mean, these right here, these are the original one. They feel about the same, the, the material feels about the same. So hopefully they last another 20 years. If not, it's whatever, 30 bucks. We're gonna go ahead and install the speakers. If you take a look, they're both facing the same way, but the cables are actually facing the opposite way. So just figure out which one is best for you for the left and the right. As I mentioned, all you have to do is match the pegs. You should be all set. And we're gonna go ahead and install the driver one first.
All right guys, so I finished the speakers install and I tested it out and they work so good. Uh, honestly, it makes a big difference having those two speakers in the front. All right guys, so that's it for repairs for tonight. Let me know if you like this WJ. Um, basically, as I mentioned, this is going to be my project um, to turn this vehicle into an overland vehicle. It's not going to be a crazy rock crawler, but, but it's still going to be a good off-road vehicle. I'm still going to create some clearance underneath. I'm still going to jack it up. I'm still going to put slightly bigger tires, uh, probably a winch. Um, as I mentioned, this is going to be an overland vehicle. So it's going to be an awesome daily driver. But on the weekend, it's going to be climbing mountains, mud, snow, you name it. Uh, so let me know if you like this vehicle. If you don't, let me know because you know I might change my mind again next day. But um, I'm definitely going to try to stop buying vehicles. And I'm definitely going to try to stop switching vehicles on my channel just because it's annoying. Probably somebody, some of you guys are interested because I had like a, a four Ranger. So like, cool, you know, let me see what he's building. And then, boom, no more four Ranger. Same thing goes with my Jaguars and my other vehicles. So hopefully this is the last vehicle for a couple of years. Um, I don't know. I just have a, be a, a weird addiction of buying vehicles and selling and flipping and all that. Uh, so let me know if you like the vehicle. I personally didn't like it at first, but now look at, looking at it and driving it, honestly, this handles way better off-road than the XJ Way Open Def, uh, just because of the quad drive. All right, guys, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and have a good one. Bye-bye.